We have a few quick updates in the SEC versus Ripple case as the expectation is that this week we'll get some kind of decision from the court on the Hinman emails. The lawyers that were to be added to the Ripple side were rejected. We'll look at the why, how, and how to move forward from that. Fed minutes get released today. We'll take a quick look at Voyager's announcement from late yesterday evening. And Cynthia Lummis is now being dubbed the Crypto Queen. So we have a mom, dad, and a queen. Lots of names out there, but we'll take a closer look at what led to that and where we're going with her in D.C. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. All right, let's take a quick look at the market. Before we dive in, we're up about 2.5% from this time yesterday at 907 billion Bitcoin at 20,300. Ethereum just over 1,100. XRP still number seven at 33 cents with Cardano right behind it at 46 cents. Those two still basically neck and neck right now. Today is the date for the Fed minutes to be released. That will be happening this afternoon, shortly after the time I get this video posted. So be on the lookout for any um, notice out of that, any kind of uh, hint as to what's next as far as rate hikes go. There's a baked in expectation that we'll see a heftier rate, uh, rate hike this month. If that doesn't come in as high, that could have an impact. And of course, there's also an expectation of another big hike in September. Uh, last time around, it did definitely have an impact on markets. So we'll see what happens. But do just be aware that is coming later this afternoon. Now, in the SEC versus Ripple case, uh, Jeremy Hogan said uh, yesterday, I think Judge Netburn will rule on the Hinman emails this week, mainly because motions to strike expert witnesses are due next week on Tuesday. Speaking of which, looking forward to Ripple's motion to strike the expert report of Mr. Duty. It should be a doozy. So an interesting take there. Uh, definitely looking forward to these rulings. We've been waiting. We were hopeful that last week would have been the time we would have seen them, but no such luck. But with those deadlines looming, it seems like this week is getting more and more likely. Fox reported that decisions were imminent, so we'll see where exactly that goes. Remember, the SEC had to submit additional documents to Judge Netburn for her in-camera review. We had the conference call last month, so that ruling is based off of what was going on there. Now, we saw yesterday the two new lawyers being added to the Ripple legal team, but uh, courtesy of James K. Filan, just this morning, their motions for admission were denied for failure to comply with the local rules. The affidavits were not notarized. So a little bit of an oversight here. If you go in here into the document, you can see the exhibit. Here's the affidavit. No notarization. So that's unfortunate. Because of that, uh, they did not go through, which means it will likely just end up being refiled. But a little bit of a misstep on the Ripple side there. Hopefully they're able to get everything sorted, get those attorneys on board for the case, and be able to move forward. Now, Voyager announced yesterday plans for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy with a recovery plan as well. So this came out late in the evening after most were probably asleep. And so this article was just posted earlier this morning on Cointelegraph. So the Chapter 11 is a restructuring. They say that there is a plan for reorganization, and when implemented, the plan would enable clients to reaccess their accounts again and return value to customers. Here is a thread from CEO of Voyager, Stephen Ehrlich. He said, as part of the plan, the proposed plan, or part of this process, the proposed plan of reorganization would resume account access and return value to customers. Customers with crypto in their accounts will receive an exchange. This is the key part. A combination of the crypto in their accounts, proceeds from the Three Arrows Capital Recovery, common shares in the newly reorganized company and Voyager tokens. So uh, a mix of assets there, but does not appear that it will be an entirely uh, your asset based allocation. Uh, there would be some kind of divvy up there. 
But the one thing that might provide some comfort to those who are holding cash, customers with U.S. dollars in their accounts, not USDC, U.S. dollars, will be able to access those funds after a reconciliation and fraud prevention process is completed with Metropolitan Commercial Bank. I'll link this down below because this article also has links to some of the other statements and background here in case you're interested in seeing more on that. Now, Cynthia Lummis, we've been more and more acquainted with over the last few months as she's raised her voice more in the crypto space. She's a Republican senator from the state of Wyoming, owns $100,000 in Bitcoin, and wrote a bill to finally regulate the industry. So if you recall, the bill that was recently proposed was with her and uh, Senator Gillibrand from New York. So she's known on Capitol Hill as the Crypto Queen. We had uh, Chris Giancarlo, uh, who's known as Crypto Dad, Hester Purse, known as Crypto Mom. So now we have a Crypto Queen. Uh, this Republican senator from Wyoming has earned a reputation as a crypto educator in Congress, demystifying and advocating for the technology among her older colleagues. Senator Lummis is a self-described hodler, crypto speak for someone who invests in Bitcoin as a way to get in before it takes over larger swaths of the financial system, says Business Insider. Do you agree with that definition? I wouldn't think it would be limited to Bitcoin only, but they apparently have assigned it that definition. In June, she introduced the bill with Senator Gillibrand, uh, and that is some of the first federal guardrails for the growing and largely unregulated world of DeFi. There are groups who want no regulation. There are groups who want to completely ban digital assets. A spokesperson for Senator Lummis told Business Insider here, we need to meet somewhere in the middle to make sure that bad actors are not taking advantage of the lack of regulatory clarity, but also that innovators can continue to develop new technologies that make our world better. And that's what we really need when you look at the Ripple case, when you look at the things that Brad Garlinghouse himself, himself has even said about um, innovators shouldn't build in the U.S. They should look elsewhere. That's a problem. We want innovation here, and we want to encourage and foster that. And hopefully, with these bills, we get guardrails in place to foster that innovation. So, Senator Lummis was the state treasurer of Wyoming from 99 to 2007 before winning a seat in the U.S. House. She served as vice chair of former President Trump's transition team after he won the election in 2016. In 2020, she became the first woman to be elected senator from the state of Wyoming that same year. She also became the Senate's first crypto owner. She bought Bitcoin in 2013, and she reported just last October it amounted somewhere between fifty dollars and $100,000. She told, Pro told Protocol last week, however, that she put her Bitcoin holdings in a blind trust after receiving blowback for owning the digital assets, but her passion for the tech and eagerness to learn puts her leagues ahead of many of her colleagues. I'm catching up, and I need to help my colleagues in Congress to catch up, she said back in October. So what would this bill do? We've looked at it in more detail in the past, but a key component of the Responsible Financial Innovation Act is how to classify digital assets, whether they're commodities or securities, and which agency should regulate them. It's a question that's long plagued the industry. Many companies have long scowled at the idea of the SEC overseeing digital assets, with many preferring the CFTC's oversight instead. The legislation agrees, at least in part, Digital assets that meet the definition of a commodity, such as Bitcoin and Ether, which comprise more than half of the digital asset market cap, will be regulated by the CFTC, reads the bill. Of course, there's more definitions yet to come, those two called out in particular. However, Senator Lummis has said the SEC will still play a key role to warn consumers of smaller cryptos that could be scams. There are assets that need disclosure where the public needs consumer protection because some of these are just fraudulent, as indeed they are. Some are fraudulent, but many are not, and so it's important that there's distinctions there. So is she the best person to write this bill? Some are skeptical of her unabashed pro-crypto fervor, Given her influence in Congress and fanfare in the industry, it, quote, calls into question whether she is approaching this bill from the perspective of wanting what's best for society as opposed to wanting what will benefit an industry that she's closely tied to and directly invested in. 
said government over or government affairs manager at the project on government oversight, Dylan Gaudet. It's a classic conflict of interest, plain and simple. So now she's even being accused of conflicts of interest. I don't know if that's right or fair, but let me know what you think in the comments below. On the other hand, some believe her enthusiasm is an asset for policymaking. Senator Lummis's interest in crypto reflects the position of many in the industry, and it's important that all parties be represented in the regulatory conversation as it unfolds, says Kenneth Goodwin, Director of Regulatory and Institutional Affairs at the Blockchain Intelligence Group. That being said, the bill is essential, or the bill is substantial, in its stance on how to designate crypto assets and enforces breaches accordingly. As for the nickname bestowed upon her, the uh, Crypto Queen of Congress, Senator Lummis is all for it. It makes her laugh. Her spokesperson said, this community is so passionate. Well, the crypto community is certainly very passionate, and we need advocates in D.C., whatever shape they take, whether they are a Bitcoin uh, proponent or an altcoin proponent, whether they are looking to um, provide clarity for us immediately, or if they're looking down the road at how to foster innovation. We need people with an open mind. We certainly need term limits, and we certainly need some age limits in place in D.C. to help make sure that we keep the free flow of thought and not this archaic way of thinking in our legislation. So let me know what you think. Is Senator Lummis a friend or foe? Is she a Bitcoin maxi, or is she someone who can represent all of crypto. I'm curious what you think. I've definitely seen both takes, but let me know in the comments where you stand on the issue. I hope you found the information helpful to, uh, today. Uh, the SEC versus Ripple case is certainly unfolding before us, and as soon as I get any updates on those pending decisions, you know that they will be uh, posted as soon as I possibly can, so I will definitely keep you informed. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, so I can keep you the most up-to-date as possible on those items as they do come out, hopefully sometime this week. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.